Professor Brian Cox is on a mission, a mission to uncover the secrets of life in the most unexpected locations and in the most stunning detail. Well, here he heads underwater to take a look at a creature that is the closest to alien intelligence on Earth. Yeah, look at those colours. What a remarkable creature. Although the octopus is a mollusk, like slugs and snails, in many ways, it seems more similar to us. Whoa! It's believed to be the most intelligent invertebrate. Like he's holding his fist up. Look at that! Its brain contains about 500 million nerve cells, about the same as a dog's. What are you doing? Wow, I was just saying that they are the weirdest looking creatures and actually, of course, you have the answer to that. <laughs> well, yeah, they're alien. They are alien in a way. Because if you look for our common ancestor, so you say, when did we split off from the things that became an octopus? It's 600 million years ago. And at that time, these things were so simple. Our ancestor, it, had no, it didn't have a brain, it didn't have eyes, it wasn't intelligent at all. Yeah. So, so that's the interesting thing about an octopus. It's got eyes that are similar to ours. Yeah. Its intelligence is similar in a way. They're thought to be as intelligent as a cat, r roughly. Really? It's not really known because some of their brain is in their legs and they operate completely separately. So the legs can think. You know, on their own? Very, yeah, so it's a very different way of building an intelligence. So evolution yeah. is incredible because it's just that twist of, you know, one way and then suddenly that way. And yeah. if it happened in a different way, we could have been sitting here with eight arms. Uh, absolutely. And, and that's, that's what the octopus did. And um, so how much of evolution is luck and coincidence? Oh, it's, um, it's, the, the interesting thing is it's not really random. The, 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 the little mutations in your genetic code, the things that, they're, they're random. Mm. But then, from then on, there's a very precise selection. So it's basically what, what's most likely to survive until yeah. it breeds. And so there will have been some advantage at some point to, to the octopus being the way that it is. And, and, and that will have been selected for, and over the years it changes. Are we, are we still evolving? I mean, are there things that in goodness how many knows time we won't have that they do have uh, I don't even know who they are we, we're just bit, because because we do that all the time now because yeah. you're just doing that eventually you're going to end up with bigger thumbs <laughs> bigger muscles and pointy ends on well, your thumb is that true only if that means you're more likely to have children Oh. So that's the, the, the point about it. We'll be dating online. It doesn't matter so whether it's it more useful. If it doesn't make you more likely to pass that on to the next generation, oh. then it doesn't get selected for. So and if you can think of a reason why having big thumbs will make you more likely to have children, <laughs> then that's a, I don't know. probably shouldn't leave that <laughs> no, too much. Leave that. Uh, but it's all <laughs> in my head. Um, the, uh, the, the wonders of life. This is uh, the, the, the way life has been approached on television, in natural history, mm. uh, has been usually we've watched it and been enthralled by um, uh, by Mr Attenborough. David Attenborough mm -hmm. has suggested that Brian Cox is his natural successor. He said on Tuesday Can evening, I... and you were there for this, mm -hmm. if I had a torch, I would hand it to Brian oh. Cox. Do you know, I, I was speechless, and I'm rarely speechless. I think I said to the newspaper afterwards, I didn't know what to say. Because obviously he is... He is science broadcasting. He invented it. And you forget, it's not only the programmes. He, he commissioned things when he was running BBC Two, like Civilization, Kenneth Clark, um, The Ascent of Man, Monty Python, actually, yeah. he's responsible for. Yes, yeah, so, so he's an uh, iconic figure. And for him to say that, I thought was... Must be. Yeah, I yeah. just couldn't say So anything. he's mostly biology. He does a lot of biology. We yeah. know that you are physics. Uh, and, and space and time. Mm. Um, did you have to brush up on your biology to, to do a, a book like this a and lot. series like that? And a fascinating thing, so I did O-level biology back in the 80s and, and that's so where my knowledge was frozen and it's changed radically. You know, uh, with you know, sequencing, of you, you, the hum, human genome has been sequenced. So the fact that we're able to read the DNA of animals now really cheaply and quickly, that the picture of, of how the animals changed and evolution and how the different species emerged, it's really precise now. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't all the way back then, so it's, it's changed immeasurably in 30 years, which is exciting. And during filming, you had to do some pretty scary things, like sort of going in a big cage and sharks being yeah. there, but it wasn't so much that that bothered you, it was the bugs. I don't like bugs. I don't like <laughs> spiders. And, and the, the problem is that when you film a natural history series, you go to areas of biodiversity where there are many animals. So David that Attenborough means... will be at home now going, oh. <laughs> that means no. you're lots of... No, but I, I, we <laughs> filmed a shark 
Yeah, and, and I really enjoyed filming yeah. a shark in a shark cage. I wasn't frightened at all until, but it, the trouble is, it was in Australia. You know what Aussies are like when you play cricket and they have a go at the palms, you know? And, and, and he was said, I said, it's almost like you, you wouldn't need a cage. It's, you know, I felt really relaxed. You could almost take the cage away. And he said, no, it's, it's like a cake shop. You walk past a cake shop and there's a big window there, you look at the cake. If there's no window there, you might be tempted to go, yeah, <laughs> and take the cake. And, and he just kept going at me, trying to make me nervous about it. But you say that's if that. it's something that you can understand, then you're, you're not nervous about it. Yeah, well, because it, it's a big steel cage. Mm. Although a, a great white shark is a big thing, and they look like Jaws. Mm. You, you think Jaws, the film, you think, well, it's a bit exaggerated. Is it, it is a bit exaggerated. But still, when they open their mouth and having uh, said that, you, you know, here you are with a massive mouth of a great white shark. You're in a cage. But it was the bugs, as you said, that bothered you, because you put on <laughs> so much bug repellent, you melted the back of your camera. I did, yeah. I had to have a new back put on my camera. It's deep, you know, it's nasty stuff. But I just, I'd send up covered, like, there's a picture in the book, actually, of me with this sort of net, wearing the net on my oh, head. Oh, I'm never going to find it. I know, I know, but we can find it. You <laughs> having, having done this, do you look at things differently again? Yeah, very much so. I mean, I, I said at the end of one of the programmes that, um, the, when, when we did, we did stargazing live in the astronomy mm. programmes and the idea was to make people look at the night sky and just see worlds instead of points of light. A completely different way oh, of looking at the night lovely. sky. And with, with that, I really realised that if you look at a blade of grass anywhere, so you go outside, even there's a pavement with a little blade of grass, yeah. the history of our planet is written into the blade of grass. Yeah, every cell does what it does because of things that happened millions, actually billions of years ago. So you start looking at life differently because you say that that's the history of my world. Can I world um, can I just talk a little bit about? Also, I'm looking you're for looking this. For the, you, 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 give us I'll a chapter. It. It. It's, it's, it's in chapter one. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll you talk find about it comets. I want to talk about comets because mm. um, we we are going to have some close encounters, aren't we? Yes, spectacular potentially. First of all, an asteroid. This is an asteroid on February the 15th. This is, mm. this is coming up February the 15th. It's apparently going to pass closest to us than, than 26,000 miles up. It's the closest that we've ever had one that we've been able to map. That we've known about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, th there are lots of asteroids that cross the Earth's orbit, and we, we map them. So there's a, the, there are different telescopes around the world whose job it is to look at them. There it is. <laughs> that, that's me. That's what I do in jungles. There you go, complete want, with hair. I net. want a complete encounter suit. <laughs> with, uh, but yes, so, and then, so that's the asteroid. That's yeah. not going to hit us. We're no, all right. We know no. where that's going to yes. go. But will we see it, do you think? No. No, we won't no. see it. OK. Oh, well. Uh, what oh, about the, the one the, you... No, no, no. The comets oh, are the yes. ones that are going to be oh, spectacular. This is what he's this is yeah, yeah. I'm so that. excited. This is at the end of the year, yeah? Well, there's one, there's one in March, which yeah. should be visible to the naked eye. But the one at the end of the year is very exciting. It's got to go very close to the sun in November, I think, December. So if it doesn't break up, it's going very close to the sun and it comes out. What will it, it look like? It, well, it might be one of those. You know those medieval comets you see on tapestries and they, they, they herald the birth of a king or something like that? They, they'd be yeah. The proper comets that you imagine. It could look Streaking like that. Streaking across the, the sky. Big <gasps> its tail across the sky. Oh, so with a bit of luck around Christmas time and into the new year, yeah. um, we might see one of the, the most spectacular comets in history. And then they then wow. they reckon, if I'm right, that we'll then we as the Earth will pass through the tail yes. and we could end up with what they call a meteor storm. Yeah. So you end up a perfectly harmless, loads and loads of bits of dust, but it will be spectacular as we Burning pass up. through it. And it's thought that most of the meteor showers, the regular ones, are the, the remains of comets that have gone through. They leave all this dust and debris and rock and the Earth passes through them at the same time every year. Wow. So we should go through its tail and we might get another display. I love it. Oh, we could talk about this all I day. I love it. Wonders of love Life, uh, BBC Two, Sundays at nine. Mm. Uh, and thank you very much, Steve, for coming you. in. And of course, the book is out now to I accompany the, the series. Ruined the cover slightly, looking for the hair. There it is. Uh, lovely to see you, Brian. Thank you very Great much. The last you time you were here was that 2008. The last time you were here, and you were so. you were electrocuted fun. Oh, I love that. That's a great <laughs> clip. I'm sure it must be on YouTube somewhere. If it isn't, we should put it there. It's here. It's Oh, you got it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Here you go. I'll turn it on. Now, what it's doing is this is electrons are being rubbed off this. Yes. Rubbed off this and into your hands. Yes. But because you've got your wellies on, yes. you're filling up with electrons. I can feel it going yeah. off my arm. Oh, your hair up. is starting to yeah. stand up. Is in it? fact, yes. in fact, often. Ow! Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Do that now. Health and safety. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Day. Thank you. Right, here's Jeff Brazier swanning around in the Maldives again with his top off, but he won't be there much longer because time is running out for you to enter our Jet Set January prize draw.